Hey guys, it's Simmy and this is Brussling Unlimited as it is Monday and we're here to talk about tonight's Monday Night Raw. I'm going to be honest, I didn't hate tonight's Raw, but this show felt long. I felt like I was sitting here for hours. This show just felt like it kept on going and going and going. Like, jeez, this show felt very long. Just going to say it. Just gonna say it not saying it was a bad episode there were some things on this show i liked there were some good matches and whatnot but it just it felt like a very long show it felt longer than a what do i say how do i say it It felt i wouldn't say it felt longer than three hours but typically a three-hour episode of raw to me doesn't feel like what you would think three hours feels like but this did this did. But with that, I want to say thank you for joining me here. What if whether you're watching live, twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited, or if you're watching or listening later, whether that's youtube.com forward slash pro wrestling unlimited or podcast services all around the globe like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Inker, iHeartRadio, and so much more. Now, before we get into anything else, I want to say thank you guys for helping us be what successful ish. On Spotify, I'm going to read you some of our Spotify, what they call Spotify wrapped stats. I got these today. It stated that we created over 40, uh, no, we created over 75 hours of content posted to Spotify, uploaded on to Spotify, and we created more hours of content than 96% of the creators in what is called the sports podcast category we were listened to in 11 different countries and our most listened to podcast on Spotify in 2022 was our review of Ric Flair's last match but with that I do want to say thank you for supporting us on all different platforms whether it's right here live on Twitch whether it's right here on YouTube whether that is over on our TikTok, over on our Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, Anchor, iHeartRate, any of those. Thank you for supporting us throughout the year. I highly, highly appreciate all the support, all of the support. Also, we're doing awards. We're doing year-end awards. I was going to have them ready this week, but everything that happened with my dad, I'm pushing it back just so we can work on getting the nominees situated and everything. I thought I would have everything ready, but then I basically didn't work for the second half of last week. So I'm going to work with my team. It's actually going to be us and I believe the In The Click crew coming together, get our nominees and everything put together. Then you, the fans, are going to vote on the nominees. And then in January, we're all going to come together and we're going to present the awards as far as telling you who you voted it's different categories like male wrestler of the year, female wrestler of the year, match of the year, uh, tag team of the year, and so forth. So that's going to be a cool thing that you guys get to participate in. And yeah, enough with that. I want to say thank you. If you're watching live twitch.tv forward slash PW unlimited, if you are, well, you can help us out a couple of different ways. You can either help us out by hitting that donate button down below or by donating Twitch bits in the live chat. Also, remember, you can help us out by subscribing to the channel one of two different ways. You can either subscribe with a tiered subscription or you can subscribe with Amazon Prime. Because remember, if you have Amazon Prime, then you have Prime Gaming. Prime Gaming gives you a lot of cool things like free games, free stuff for games. And they always give you one free subscription to any Twitch channel you want to subscribe to throughout the month. All you got to do is take your Amazon Prime account or anybody's Amazon Prime account. Well, that's your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your grandma, your grandpa, your auntie, your uncle. Link it to a Twitch account. Bada bing, bada boom. Your Prime Gaming. Prime Gaming is very cool. Very awesome. Yes, it supports us. But it also helps you get free stuff if you play video games. Also, remember, if you're watching on YouTube, you can help us out over there by becoming a channel member. As a channel member, you get early access to news, early access podcast episodes, early access to non-news videos, and so much more. Also, remember, you can get all of that by heading over to patreon.com forward slash PW Unlimited. You can get all of that. You can get our graphics packages. We uploaded our last two graphics packages to both channel members on YouTube and Patreon subscribers for AEW Full Gear and for WWE Survivor Series. 
We also do the tutorials free for everybody to see on our YouTube. And I'm asking you guys, if you guys are creators, if you guys use Photoshop and stuff and like some of the things that I create and are always kind of maybe like, oh, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? Message me. Give me ideas for more tutorials. Of course, I'll be doing all of my pay-per-view graphic tutorials, but if there's other things I do, whether it's certain graphics you see on the channel, certain things you go, whoa, how'd you do that in After Effects? What program did you use for that? Let me know, and I'll either create a full tutorial for it, or maybe we can do it really quickly in like an Instagram reel or a YouTube shorts video or something. So hit me up on Twitter for that one, Twitter, at PW Unlimited or at Timmy Buddy, and be like, hey, I want to know how you did this in this video, or I like this graphic you posted on Twitter. How'd you make that? And then I can show you guys how to do it. I'm just looking for more content that is different from other wrestling channels, and I'm looking for your input. I want to create what you guys want to see. And so if there's, again, I'm repeating myself, but just in case you didn't hear fully, if there's something you see that I create and you want to know how I created it, just let me know. and I'll try to make a video showing you guys how. Finally, head over to the Epic Game Store. Head over to the Epic Game Store and buy something. Whether you're buying a new game, whether you're buying an old game, whether you're claiming a free game or getting bucks for Rocket League, Fortnite, Fall Guys, or Rumbleverse, use our code PWUNLIMITED, the code right here at checkout. You'll be supporting us at no extra cost. It just takes a couple seconds to put the code in. Code P-W-U-N-L-I-M-I-T-E-D at checkout for all Epic Games and Epic Game Store purchases. We get a little kickback. If you're already buying something, either whether that's the Epic Game Store or one of the five different games that supports this on different platforms, like, again, Fortnite, Rumbleverse, I just blanked, Fall Guys, and Rocket League. It's four. It's four. Also, Season 4 Fortnite just came out. Use this code. Go to the bottom of the store, and it's going to say, do you have a creator code? And you do. It's PW Unlimited. Put that code in before you buy the Battle Pass, and you'll be supporting us right here at no extra cost. But with that, we're going to talk about Monday Night Raw. So let me make a note here. All right, cool. We're talking Raw. And this show opened up. Tag title match. And I'm like, whoa, tag title match. What's the main event? What's the main event if it's not the tag title match? But a lot happened here before the match even got started. So the Bloodline enters, opens the show. We hear Mike Rome say the following match for the, a, or for the WWE Undisputed World Tag Team Championships, or whatever they call them now. And making their way to the ring, the tag team champions, the Usos. Well, then all of a sudden, we get a shot of earlier today in the parking lot, or the parking garage. It's the Bloodline arriving to the building. Simon Saxton tried interviewing the Bloodline, but Matt Riddle would blow past them on their scooter, kind of irritating them. Bloodline didn't appreciate that and said that they'd take out Riddle later on tonight. Elias would then happen to be nearby and pop out from behind their SUV. So, like, the SUV's right here. They're standing in front of the SUV. Like, this is the front of the SUV. So, Saxton's like this, interviewing them towards the back. All of a sudden, behind them, Riddle just pops out. And then all of a sudden behind him, so Sokoa just pops out and knocks him out. So then all the bloodline beats him down. Basically, we got to be reminded sometime that the bloodline are heels. Just saying. We got to be reminded sometime that the bloodline are heels, despite the reactions that they do get from crowds all around the country. So, they lay out Elias, Sami Zayn, um, chuckled upon realizing, oh, Elias is hurt. Back in the ring, the Usos announced that the tag team title match was canceled because Elias could not compete. But they were still happy to defend their titles at any time. This is when Riddle would come out and go, bro, 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 you may have taken out Elias, but I found somebody else. He's like, what you did to Elias wasn't really how you say it, Usi. I didn't think you guys would run from a fight like this. Sammy took the, the mic and said, hold on, my dog. No, he said, hold up, my dog. Hold up, my dog. I, I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't know what it is, but whenever Sammy says, my dog, I can't help but smile. I can't help but chuckle. And I, the crowd, when he said it too, hold up, 
my dog. The crowd chuckled and laughed as well. Uh, Zane called himself an oosiolog or oosologist. And he would decide, he would decide what and was an oosi. Zane said the Sokoa is the enforcer, and that's oosi. The Usos, Jimmy and Jay, longest reigning tag team champions, and that's oosi. And Zane suggested, well, you know, Riddle, you, you got no partner. You should just go home. Riddle then said, I did find myself a partner. We may not be quite bros, but we both don't like you guys. And out would come Kevin Owens. The two teams had a 14-minute title match. It was really good. I really enjoyed this opening contest. The Owens was in control early and through a commercial break. The Usos used the referee as a distraction to take over later. And, excuse me. Uh, they beat down Riddle through another break. So within eight minutes, we had two commercial breaks. Owens then made the hot tag immediately after the break and hit Jimmy Uso with a swanton bomb for a two. Jimmy blocked both a stunner and a pop-up powerbomb and hit a super kick. Jay and Riddle tagged in and exchanged strikes until Riddle sent Jay out of the ring. <laughs> Owens was about to go after him, but Solo Sokoa stood in his way, so Riddle wiped out Sokoa with a dive. Jimmy then made the blind tag while Riddle was distracted, but Zayn and the Usos gave him the, or no, distracted by Zayn, and then the Usos gave him a 1D to pick up the victory, so Riddle yet again gets pinned. Like, come on. Riddle wins the fight pit and then just goes on a kind of just mediocre streak. Picking up sometimes wins, but wins that don't mean anything, and then in big matches, getting pinned. Like, come on. Come on. What are we doing here? He beat Seth Rollins in the fight pit, only for Seth Rollins to move on and win the U.S. title, getting this big old feud with Bobby Lashley and Austin Theory, and Riddle's just kind of just on the back burner. Like, what are we doing, Triple H? I wouldn't have thought I would question Triple H as much as I'm questioning him on the booking of, of, of Matt Riddle, because this is just befuddling, if I do say so myself. Usos then put the uh, boots to Riddle after the match. Owens attacked the Usos with a chair before chasing them and Zayn to the back. Riddle was alone in the ring with Solo Sokoa, so he attacked him, hitting him with the Samoan spike and the running hip attack. Big ol', big ol' tribute to Umaga. Let's go then put Riddle's head and neck through a steel chair and hit a running, another running hip attack. So, I mean, they've been giving Solo, like, Umaga look-ish and the Umaga moves and stuff. So it's just like, yeah, further solidifying, he a new Umaga. Also, today is the 13th anniversary of Umaga's passing. Just saying. Medical staff came out and uh, put a neck brace on Matt Riddle. Took him out on a stretcher, and they're like, we'll get an, an update later on. We'll let you guys know what we find out. They did say hospital later, too, that he was taken to a, quote, hospital. Um, uh, the announcer said that Drew McIntyre has not been medically, uh, has been medically disqualified for wrestling this Friday on SmackDown in the tag title match, Usos will still be defending the titles, but instead it will be Sheamus and Butch. Sheamus and Butch will be challenging the Usos for the tag titles. I like that. I like that. It's going to be a good match, regardless. Uh, then let us know there will be three triple threat matches, or two triple threat matches tonight. The winners of those matches will then move on to face each other next week with the winner then becoming the number one contender for Bianca Belair and the Raw Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley cut a promo saying that she would win her match and then beat Belair. Then the whole locker room would only have to call her or would have no... Oh, how did she state it? The locker room would have no right but to call her mommy or something like that. She's like, the locker room's going to have to call me mommy going forward. JBL then hosted his high stakes invitational poker tournament. This was multiple segments throughout the show. There were two tables, and those participating or just watching were Baron Corbin, Chad Gable, Otis, Dominic Mysterio, Mia Yim, Shelton Benjamin, Akira Tazawa, Dana Brooke, Tamina, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, and AJ Styles. 
Dex and Loomis and Johnny Gargano showed up, and Loomis, they're like, you need X amount, I think it's like 50 grand to enter. And Loomis just opens up the Louis Vuitton bag, drops all the money that Miz paid him, and he's like, oh, yeah, you're in. JBL's like, well, first JBL's like, you're a creep. What's in your bag? And then he drops the money, and he's like, yeah, you're in. He was happy to invite Gargano and Loomis into the tournament. Bailey entered the ring before her match, and before she could say anything, Becky Lynch would interrupt through the crowd. Lynch mentioned that it's been three years since they've had a singles match against one another, and also gave Bailey credit for carrying the company through the Thunderdome era. Bailey told the crowd to cheer, and they didn't. Bailey told her to stop reminiscing. She was annoying. Uh, she was annoyed that the spotlight was always on Lynch when she was around, and complained because the fans don't respect her. Bailey, that is. The crowd chanted for Becky, though. Lynch said that two-thirds of damage control have been successful, but, uh, well, you've been more of a loser. You've been more of a loser. Lynch said if Bailey won her match tonight, maybe she'd finally be able to go one-on-one -on -one with a man. As Lynch left, Rhea Ripley would enter. Then Lynch and Ripley had a stare down, which was very interesting. We go to commercial comeback, and Asuka comes out for the triple threat. Oh, how Bubba says, do you play poker? Yeah, I've played. I don't play often, but I'll play every so often. I'll get on like, uh, what is it? The Zynga poker app, or I'll get on the, um, what is it called? The Four Kings Casino, play some poker on there. I'll just go to the actual casino and throw down a hand or two. If I go to the actual casino, I either play slots or blackjack for the most part, not poker, but I'm not saying I haven't. Maybe not in a year at an actual casino. So, yeah, the Four Kings Casino and Slots game. So the next match, it was the first of two triple threat matches. It was Bailey, go to uh, Bailey, Asuka, and Rhea Ripley. Match from 15 minutes and 17 seconds. Ripley wiped out Bailey and Asuka with a dive early on, ahead of a commercial break. Ripley and Bailey worked together on Asuka, but Asuka chucked Bailey from the ring before hitting Ripley with some strikes and a code breaker for a two. Asuka hit both women with yes kicks, and Bailey caught her in a cradle for a two. Ripley head butted Bailey before Asuka gave Bailey a German suplex. Asuka mocked, uh, knocked down Ripley with a kick, but Bailey yanked Asuka out of the ring before she, she could follow up. Bailey wanted to work with Ripley again. But Ripley didn't trust her, so they exchanged strikes until Asuka knocked them both down with a nice-looking double code breaker. Asuka tried to pin each woman, but they, or each woman, but they both kicked out. Asuka hit Bailey with a missile drop kick and applied the Asuka lock, but Ripley broke it up. Asuka put Ripley in an arm bar, but Bailey nailed Asuka with a diving elbow and got a two off of it. Bailey gave Asuka Bailey to belly, but Ripley broke up the cover. Ripley repeatedly headbutted Bailey and hit a Northern Lights suplex for a two. Ripley went after Bailey outside the ring, but Bailey dodged and Ripley splatted, just splatted right on the mat. Oscar and Bailey had a back to back, uh, back and forth exchange at one point that led to Bailey hitting the rose plant and picking up the victory. Oscar got the most offense and then took the pin at the end. So it's like, okay, Oscar's losing, so we got to make her still look good in defeat. She's gonna get a bunch of offense, but she's gonna get pinned. Then, Rhea realized what happened. Bailey slides out of the ring. Rhea slides into the ring and beats up Asuka. She's basically just laid her out the riptide. They then told us that next week we're going to have a number one contenders match for the U.S. Championship. It'll be Bobby Lashley against Seth Rollins. After a break, Rollins made his way out to the ring. He got a short promo and twice led the crowd into the singing of his, of his theme song. Oh. Crowd then started chanting for Bobby, which was kind of weird that when Seth was out there. Like, Seth Rollins has been a pretty big baby face recently, and they're out here chanting for Bobby Lashley. Lashley came out and wanted to hear what Rollins say, told him to choose his words wisely. Rollins thought Lashley hasn't been the same since losing to Brock Lesnar. He's like, you can't beat Brock. And that's all you ever think about is Brock and losing to Brock and not being able to beat Brock. And you're obsessed with Brock. And I'm like, beat Brock at the Rumble with the title on the line, guy. Braun thought maybe Lashley was scared of Brock Lesnar, but figured he was actually jealous because Brock had the career that Bobby always wanted. 
Lashley then grabbed him by the collar and basically warned him, watch your words. Rollins didn't listen, and Lashley said that he, or Rollins didn't listen and said, you can't beat Lesnar. And at one point, he, he said it like three or four times. And at one point when he said, you can't beat Lesnar, he's like, and don't worry about it. We've all been there. We've all lost to him. I liked that line when he's like, we've all been there, though. Lashley would then go, to, go on to attack Rollins, and they started a little brawl. Officials and referees would run down to the ring to break it all up. Eventually, Lashley went for a spear on Rollins. Rollins would dodge the spear, and, oh, well, Petey Williams would take the spear as well, uh, instead. And Corey Graves would keep mentioning him as Pete Williams. And I'm just like, I know what you're talking about, but it's just so weird because I've always ever heard of him as Petey Williams, Petey Williams, Petey Williams, Petey Williams. And Corey Graves said it a couple times, Pete Williams, Pete Williams, Pete Williams. And I was like, I, I know he's, I know, but it's like, oh, so is that what you guys call him backstage? Pete? Because I've just never known him since like, 2003, 2004 in AEW, or TNA is Petey Williams, part of Team Canada, and the Maple Leaf Muscle, and what, what was it? Little Petey Pump. Like, I, I've been watching Petey Williams since like 2003, 2004, as Petey Williams. So when Corey kept saying, Pete Williams, Pete Williams, I'm just like, I know this shouldn't bug me, but it kind of is just a little bit. Just a little bit. After this happens, Austin Theory gets interviewed in the back. Saxon's like, hey, what do you think of what just went down? He's like, it's all good. They're past champions. They're in the past. It's whatever. And then Moose Folly would appear to mock Austin Theory. Theory basically called Ali a loser and told him, you need to just quit. Ali said that he wasn't a quitter, like Theory, and said that he had to fight for every opportunity he's had. Theory had enough of him and said, okay, you want to fight? I'll challenge you to a match, and we'll end this once and for all. We then got a trailer for a Ric Flair documentary upcoming, I want to say December. Let me pull that up. I don't want to say it off the top of my head and be wrong. It's December 16th, 26th. There's a Ric Flair documentary coming out on Peacock on December 26th. Now, I don't know if this is going to just be on Peacock or if it's going to be on Peacock under the WWE section. The way they're promoting it makes it seem like it's just a full-on Peacock production and not like something under WWE. It could be in the WWE section, but it's coming off as more of like a Peacock production called Woo Becoming, the, or Becoming Ric Flair. Because I also didn't see anything that was like also on the WWE Network internationally, which leads me to believe that this could also be some sort of like this can only be some sort of like a peacock production. So we go back to the poker tournament. Gallows called Gable a nerd for folding. They yelled nerd and shush. He's like nerd, shush, nerd, shush. They kept doing this until Corbin told them to stop because he was trying to win. Couldn't read on, couldn't get a read on Loomis with their being them being distraction distracting. Corbin, uh, Corbin called with a straight, but Loomis won with a full house, aces and jacks. Corbin accused Loomis of cheating and threatened him, so Loomis put an axe through the table. Corbin backed down. At the other table, Tozawa won a big hand and was taking his chips, but then Dominic tried to take some as well. Tozawa called him out, but Dom told him, hey, you're as small as my dad, and I can show you and do whatever I want. He's like, you mess with me, you mess with the judgment day. Tazawa didn't care and told Dom he was the problem. They got in each other's face. And then JBL suggested, get out of here and go have a match. You two need to go fight. Tazawa then told Dom that he'd see him in the ring. Give me one second. We're having slight stream issues for the live stream. If you're watching on YouTube, you're probably perfectly fine. But let me just change this a setting here for the live stream on Twitch really fast. Let's put this to let's try this and see if this helps because it keeps buffering on Twitch. 
need to apologize. I don't know why. But if you are having buffering issues on Twitch, the full video, non-interrupted, will be posted immediately after on YouTube. <clears throat> All right, let's try that. Yeah, I'm getting no internet for some reason. Give me one more second, guys, to just do a quick test. Hmm, yeah, I'm getting like... Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. It looks like the stream may have restarted itself and still not running right. Yeah, I'm getting like no internet. So we're going to try and trek on. But if you guys are having issues watching on Twitch, just go to YouTube and the whole podcast will be there. I do apologize. I do apologize. All right, so moving forward, we have the United States champion, Austin Theory, against Mustafa Ali. Match went eight minutes before ending in a disqualification. What the hell? So I went through a break, going back and forth, back and forth. They messed up a spot where Ali set it for Hurricane Rana off the ropes, but they fell over and landed awkwardly. The result could, be, could have been much worse. It didn't seem like anybody got hurt from it, so that's good. Ali then followed right up with the Tornado DDT that spiked Theory. Theory fought back and hammered away at Ali in the ropes as the referee told him to stop. Theory didn't listen, and he pulled him off of Ali. Then, all of a sudden, Dolph Ziggler would just run out, super kick Theory, and cause a DQ. What the hell, Dolph? You got another Theory problem? We saw this months ago, when he wanted to fight Theory and had problems with Theory and stuff. Now what, you're still not over Theory, guy? Ali would then confront Ziggler for ruining his opportunity, and the two uh, argue. Theory then decked Ziggler from behind before driving Ali into the ring post. Theory then laid out Ziggler with the A-Town down, and the crowd booed. So it seems like up to this point, every single match has had a beatdown or post-match brawl or something afterwards. Visitor approached JBL outside the locker room because he wanted to play in the tournament. JBL didn't know that he played cards, but invited him in as long as he paid the buy-in. Miz didn't have it because, well, he's a little short on cast right now after what happened last week. JBL didn't believe him and politely turned him down. Miz offered up his Rolex, and JBL goes, It's a fake! That's a fake, guy! The so Corbin appeared to win his hand with four kings. But he had extra cards for some reason. AJ Styles called him out. And they got in a little bit of an argument. JBL yelled at him for ruining the tournament. Styles then told Corbin to get his gear on so they can fight in the ring. He's like, you bring your friends, Alpha Academy, and I'll bring mine. Everybody left, and that was the end of the tournament stuff. Big thing that was missing here. Like a big missed opportunity to have in these segments that would have been freaking perfect. Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes would have been Perfect in these segments when JBL would be like, hey, what kind of money do you have? And he's like, well, I got a lot of money and I can win this tournament and take it to the moon. I thought freaking such a missed opportunity not bringing in Cameron Grimes, even if it's just for one night and not like a call up or anything just for tonight. That would have been so awesome. Kathy Kelly then interviewed Bianca Belair, and also all she really said was, I'm ready to face anyone. Whoever the challenger is, I'll face them. That was it. That was it. That's, that's all she said. But then a six-man tag. It was the OC, AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, and Luke Gallows against the Alpha Academy and Baron Corbin. I like Alpha Academy with Corbin. I like them with Corbin, with JBL. Build a little stable around JBL. Fuck it. Give me JBL's cabinet. Give me JBL's cabinet. Baron Corbin's the new Orlando Jordan. Alpha Academy, the new Bashams. All they need is a freaking Amy Weber, and we're good to go. Oh, I got it. You ain't doing nothing with Dana Brooke. Remember how Dana Brooke was the secretary for Titus Worldwide? Boom. 
She's the new secretary for JBL's cabinet. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. There we go. There we go. There we go. Bill, JBL's the wrestling god. Aaron Corbin, the modern day wrestling god. Bring in Alpha Academy. Maybe bring in somebody like a Dana Brooke. You're going to have to turn heel for this, but fuck it. You ain't doing anything with her anyways. And there we go. Rebuild, rebuild JBL's cabinet from 2004. When it was him, Orlando Jordan, the Bashams, and Amy Weber. I think it was Amy Weber. I think it was Amy Weber. Give me two seconds to look that up. JBL's cabinet. It was the cabinet. JBL's cabinet was consisted of Yeah. JBL, of course. Okay, okay. So this is where I was, I was getting confused. Amy Weber was the image consultant. Because I was like, was it Amy Weber or Jillian Hall? But they were both involved at one point. Amy Weber was the image consultant. And Jillian Hall was the publicist and kind of like the one that set up the matches and like the manager person. So yeah, fucking let's do it. Rebuild JBL's cabinet. You've got most of it there. You got Corbin. You've got the Alpha Academy. Because it was co-secretaries of defense in the Basham brothers. The chief of staff in Orlando Jordan and the president leader in JBL. So you can have JBL as the president again and all these guys under him. Oh my God. Why have they not thought of this? Why have they not thought of this? This is genius. So the heels gained control early on in the six man tag and worked over Styles after a, a break. The distraction allowed Corbin, the illegal man, to hit Styles with a deep six, but Gable only got a two off the, off the, uh, the count, the pin, the fall, whatever you want to call it. Styles then dropped Otis with a Pele kick and tagged in Anderson, who ran wild on Gable. Anderson hit a spine buster, but Corbin broke up the cover and gave Styles a backbreaker. Styles decked Corbin moments later, and Gallows dropped him with a big boot. Otis gave Gallows an impressive overhead suplex, but Styles hit Otis with a phenomenal forearm. Gable suplexed Styles and rolled up Anderson for a two. Anderson hit an uppercut and tagged in Gallows. Gallows then saved Anderson from Gable's chaos theory and gave him a magic killer to pick up the victory. Really fun match. Really liked the... I'm not saying the first part of the match was bad, but I thought the second half of this match was really, really good. Really, really good. Um, We got Bliss. She was shown warming up backstage. Lily Doll was with her. And Bray Wyatt's logo once again flashed on the screen behind her briefly. They're doing something. I don't know what. I don't know what. Byron Saxon interviewed Candice LeRae, who spoke about her issues with damage control. And they let us know that she beat Dakota. Now she's going to have to take on EO. She goes, but I'm a new mom. I've got a lot of new priorities. I've learned a lot about myself. And I've got more to fight for. Gargano and Loomis then showed up. And Johnny's like, we won. He's like, you won? He's like, yeah, we won. Look. And Dexter like gives her a thumbs up and then opens the bag. And she's like, oh, wow. What the? Johnny covers her mouth before she says an F-bomb. Candice then goes, uh, yeah, Byron, I don't want to be that guy. But it's a lot of money. We got we to gotta go. We got to go. And Byron's like, oh, no, I don't blame you. Yeah, go take care of what you got to take care of. I love the dynamics that they have on the Raw backstage interview team. You got Kathy Kelly, who's the more, you know, journalistic interviewer as far as, like, asking the hard questions, being the typical WWE interview chick. And then you have Byron, who's just, like, the bud half of the time. Like, he's, he can be serious in his backstage interviews as well, but he's also sometimes just the bud, where he's like, hey, Candice, so, uh... You beat Dakota last week. Now you got to face EO. What's up with that? Like, what are your thoughts? Like, because I'm not saying Kathy Kelly can't be cool and not serious as well. She has been. But I like the dynamic of she's a little more 
like journalistic and then Byron's a little more like I mean, almost like laid back at times. So I like the dynamic on, on Raw for sure with the backstage interviewers because they have, they're not just all the same. Like before when you would have like, what was it? I'm trying to remember who was it on Smack? When it was Kayla? Well, they, we do this with, it's on SmackDown too. Kayla is more like, the Byron Saxton, who can at times be just laid back, chill, cool. And then Megan Morant, who is the more serious interviewer. I guess you could say the more, you know, Megan O'Leavy type. There you go. That's it right there. That's it right there. You got Caleb, um, you got Caleb Braxton and Byron Saxton, who are more of the laid back, chill interviewers, but can be serious when they need to. And then you have, you know, Megan Morant and um, Kathy Kelly. More of the like ESPN's Megan O'Leavy type, more serious, just to the point facts and whatnot kind of interviewer. Then we had Dominic Mysterio versus Akira Tozawa, match only about two and a half minutes, maybe three ish. Tozawa took most of the match, but missed a diving senton, and Dominic followed with a frog splash for the pin. Judgment Day then would go on the attack afterwards with Tozawa before the Street Profits would run out to make the save and Judgment Day bailed. Also, guys, the stream's cut in and out about 10 times here on Twitch. I'm just going to end it, unfortunately. And the whole stream will be up and available on YouTube. I extremely apologize. Extremely apologize. But let me just put that in the chat for anybody that doesn't see it because of the buffering. I do apologize for that. <clears throat> so in the back, Adam Pierce would approach Bobby Lashley as it seemed like he was leaving the building. Adam goes, hey, we, we have to talk what happened earlier. You can't just spear one of my guys. And I, I know what happened wasn't intended or anything, but it, it, it just can't happen again. He's like, I'm not going to punish you or anything. But this is a warning. And Lashley's like, come on, really? Lashley said that he was punishing the lion, one of his guys jumping in the way. His guys got involved, and now he's getting a talking to. Like, he didn't go after them. Kind of a, Bobby Lashley was pretty annoyed here. But Lashley's like, I, I get it, though. I understand. But I got a warning for you as well. Tell you guys to stay out of my way. I liked this. I liked this. Because it's like, We've seen in the past people like Ronda Rousey, for instance, get in trouble for essentially laying out an official. Well, Bobby Lashley speared Petey Williams, or as Corey Graves called him, Pete Williams. And he's like, so, you know, Adam Pierce has to at least address it and go, hey, I know it wasn't intentional. I know it was accidental, but... We got to be more careful. You got to be a little more careful. And Lashley comes back at him going, I get it. But then tell you guys not to get in my goddamn way. <clears throat> Coming up next week on Monday Night Raw, we got three things announced. We got Bobby Lashley versus Seth Rollins in a number one contenders match for the U.S. title. Candice LeRae will be taking on EO Sky. And we will have a number one contenders match for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. Speaking of the number one contenders match, we know it's Bailey and... It would be Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss won a triple threat match against both Nikki Cross and Becky Lynch. Match went 16 and a half minutes in our Raw main event. So, a small portion of the crowd buzzed when Bliss's face turned serious early on in this match. And she set it for a sister Abigail that was blocked by Becky Lynch. Never went for the sister Abigail again. So the first few minutes of the match were mostly between Lynch and Bliss, with Cross getting involved sporadically, I guess you could say. Cross eventually drove Lynch into the steps and gave Lynch a neckbreaker outside the ring. Cross and Blinch, uh, bl Blinch, Bliss, Cross and ha had Bliss in a rest hold after a commercial break, but Lynch jumped in and hit Cross with some strikes, a bulldog, and a leg drop off the middle rope for a two. 
Puss wiped out Lynch and Cross with a dive off the apron. Uh, she then went for the cover on Cross and got a two. Then did a Tower of Doom spot where Lynch power bombed both opponents out of uh, out of the ropes and covered Cross or off the ropes and covered Cross for a two. Cross then gave Lynch a high cross, but Bliss broke up the cover. Cross shoved Bliss into the side of the ring and squished her with a crossbody against the ring. Cross then set her for a swinging neckbreaker off the ropes, but Lynch brought them both down with a diving leg drop. Lynch then went for the cover and got a two. Lynch then gave Cross a manhandle slam on the apron. She went for the pin and then would be yanked. Well, she was kind of crawling over for the pin and was then yanked out of the ring by both Dakota Kai and EO Sky. Because it's a triple threat, there's no disqualification. Lynch tried fighting them off and then they gave her a double power bomb through the announce table where they barely got her up high enough to get her through the table to break it. I'm like, oh man, that could have been bad. This then all of a sudden led to the cameras cutting really quick to the ring. Bliss jumping off with a twisted bliss onto Nikki, pinning her one, two, three, and winning the match. So essentially, she now moves on to next week to face Bailey in the number one contenders match. Good stuff here. I liked it. Interesting with the whole they screwed Becky. I feel like, I don't know why, but I feel like Alexa Bliss. Wins next week against Bailey. And then that leads to Bailey versus Becky at some point down the line. Shortly. With that, guys, that's everything that did take place tonight on Monday Night Raw. Now you heard what I have to say about Raw. I thought it was a, a good show, okay show, but it felt long. It felt like it just was never gonna end. I'm just like, man, finally at the main event, because I, I didn't think we were ever gonna get there. It just it just felt long. Not no. I'm not saying the show was bad. I liked the most of the show. It just felt longer than normal. Well, again, you know what I thought of the show. Now it's time to hear what you guys thought of tonight's Raw. Because we're not live right now on Twitch. I'm not going to do text messages. Well, I'll check them to see if anybody texted in. But we're most likely not going to get any, unfortunately. Let me just double check really quick if we did get any text messages. die. Oh, we do have a couple text messages. Okay, okay, okay. Let's read these before we go to the, the polls then. First it says... Okay, I'm not going to read this first text message because I haven't confirmed this or seen this. It's a news report that is actually very interesting to me because I haven't seen it. I'm not going to read it. First it says, are you doing predictions for ROH Final Battle and NXT Deadline? Maybe, not quite sure because my schedule's not completely open this week with... Everything going on family-wise. This person says, when Alexa Bliss, when Ale when Bliss beats Bailey next week, do you see her turning heel on Bianca if she loses a title match? It's possible, but I think she would turn before the title match, maybe. As far as the polls do go, first off, the Twitch poll. 100% liked Raw. 100% of the Twitch poll liked Raw. As we go and check the Twitter poll, 80% liked Raw, 16% thought it was just alright, and 4% did not like Monday Night Raw. And finally, as far as the YouTube poll does go, 71% liked the show, 22% thought it was just alright, and 7% didn't like Raw. Uh, as we look here, this person says, great show. This person says, awful tonight. Hmm, interesting. And the person says, I loved it. This person said, crowd boring. Okay, okay, everyone's up to their own opinions. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions. But with that, guys, I want to say thank you for joining me here. Twitch.tv forward slash PWUnlimited, YouTube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited, and podcast services all around the globe like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and so much more. We'll be back live on Friday, no, no, Wednesday, for AEW Dynamite. So with that, guys, have a great rest of your night. Have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one, guys.